I'm dripping junket. How you doing everyone? Ralph here, Ralph is Reviews, Tim No Steep. Um, I think today we're going to do a bit of a tutorial um, and a bit of a review at the same time. Let me hold on, let me have a vape. That's lovely. Um, we're going to look at Flatwire UK. Yeah. I've been using this since Daniel and the guys um, released it pretty much. I was lucky enough to win some in one of the Vendors Day competitions. And I've stayed with it. It's really, really nice wire. Now the original flat wire um, with this label. If I recall, it's a stainless steel. It's um, not 317, not 316. If you use um, steam engine online calculator, it's hot wire something or another but it's stainless steel basically um, and for those that don't know it's your regular stainless steel wire but if the camera will pick it up it's been flattened yeah so you'll see when we do the close-up it's flat if you think ribbon wire on steroids um, so you're getting all the advantages of that flat, you're getting more surface area, which is more vapour, which is more flavour. Um, but because it's not half a mil or 0.8 of a mil or whatever, it's not ridiculously thin, um, you can do seriously low bills just using this. You don't need a tiger wire, yeah? So you don't need your tiger wire. I still love tiger wire, it works well for me. It gives you that balance of um, power and flavour but this does it wonderfully as well loads of different sizes 24 up to 19 now is it 26 up to 19 gauge not sure um so there's the original they also do um ni80 which i really really like i love me ni80 i love me stainless steel they're me go-to's it's been a little while since i use canthol on a regular basis myself because I like super low builds and these wires give it me. Um, they also do a Flapton as well, which is Canthol, which is the, the flat wire wrapped like a Clapton and then flattened. Really, really makes flavour like you wouldn't believe, but I've not got any here to show you. Daniel, you know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, so flat wire UK. It's high quality, nichrome, stainless, or the Canthol Clapton flattened and it's great stuff. I know a lot of people have issues when they come to wrapping it though because of that flatness they find it twists or they can't centre it or whatever. What I'll do as always we'll get in close um, and I'll do a build yeah and you can see how I do it and then if you get some and try it yourself let me know how you get on yeah see you in a minute. Okie dokie, so I'm going to use this 21 gauge flat wire in the stainless steel configuration although I'm really tempted to use the, uh, the NI-80 because I really like it. No, we'll stick with the stainless. It's my first and uh, foremost. So when it comes, it comes in a little spool. <laughs> One end's tightly wrapped and it's got a little zip tie on there so you can tighten up your loose end stop it poking through the bag um, what I'm going to do I'm just going to find that loose end and give it a push without sticking it in my finger and that will show, look, see how that one's got big so I know that that is attached to it and I'm going to cut myself off a couple of pieces about six inches long five inches long yeah so we'll just trim trim a couple of bits of that off yeah put that one up next to this the spool there and we can get them about the same length it's not crucial obviously 
Now, what most people struggle with, from what I've heard, the feedback I've got is that it rolls because it's flat. Let's try and get you a close up. I don't know if the camera will focus, it probably won't. But if you look at it in cross section, it's flat, it's not round, so you want to keep that flat. Well, flat basically, you don't want it rolling as you do the coil, um, otherwise, it, it's not going to get the best out of the, the wire. So, what I do is I grab one end with my pliers quite firm, and then using my thumbnail, I'll pull it like that a couple of times. Yeah, and I'll just give it a bend. Just push down a little bit with your thumb so it doesn't curl up too much. And that way, it gets pretty flat. And then I'll work my way along, and I'll try and take these bends out. Again, just grab hold of it, give it a little tweak. And all we're doing is working it so it's reasonably straight, reasonably flat. It's not got to be perfect. But a little bit of preparation here will save us no end of hassle when it comes to wrapping the coils. Yeah, that's one done. Let's do his mate. So we'll grab a flat end and we'll pull it through a finger and thumbnail a couple of times. Just give it a little bend down at the same time, and then we'll just work our way along and straighten out any defects like that bend there. So we straighten that out. If it's really, really twisted, you can grab hold of the other end with another pair of pliers or your, your flush cutters without cutting it, obviously. And you can twist it about, get it just how you want it, you know. It's just worth doing. It only takes a couple of minutes and it makes life so much easier when it comes to wrapping coils. And when it comes to wrap, it's just like anything else. If you've ever done a, a fused Clapton, and you know, you put flat to your tool. I'm using one of these little screwdrivers for this one. Look we'll at that nice and flat. Okay. And we just start it, holding it nice and firm, and making sure that we keep it nice and flat. And there's one. Now, don't worry too much if it's not perfect, because we can correct that after. And we're going to follow it along. And go two, three. It almost feels like you're folding it around after a few turns. Four. And lastly, five. Okay, so they're all lovely. They're super. Nice and flat. Hopefully the camera will pick that up. There's no twist and roll, but this first wind could be tighter. So again, just like when we use any low gauge wire, just like when we're using a flap to, uh, Clapton, fused Clapton or whatever, we grab hold of that loose end with the pliers, give it a good pull, little wiggle, bend it round, and that will tighten it up lovely. Yeah, just give it a twist and a push. And there's one coil wrapped. Now, some people use these. Some people use the old uh, coil master. And you can still do it with this, just as, as you would normally. The only thing you need to watch out for is when you put it through, is make sure that it sits on that centerpiece flat. Yeah? So we'll just start that by hand and we'll go nearly a full turn making sure that it's flat and then we'll bring the tool in get the right end and we'll go one so that gives us two wraps two is three four wraps five wraps and just bring it back on itself so that the ends almost cross over and then what I do is grab that with my thumbnail and pull it off and there you've got a super coil with this scruffy end no need to worry we can pop that on there 
we can take a pliers and we can pull it so that it's just where we want it twist it so it's straight yeah and there's another coil not a problem so we've got two coils as easy as that righto what we need to do now is just get these coils set ready to fit into the RDA so what I've actually done it's been a few days between the start of this video and the point that I'm at now um, and I've rewrapped the coils nothing wrong with the ones I did but I'm not the most organised person in the world so I've kind of started afresh exactly the same wraps as before 5 wraps 21 gauge flat wires on a 2.5 bit right what I'm going to do is make sure that these legs point in slightly opposite directions yeah just like that and then we're going to get in with the pliers we're going to grab one the top leg if you like the one that the coil goes over the bit and we're going to bend it up a little bit and then we're going to get the other leg and we're going to do the same with that just like that and what that will give us is two legs just about coming off the centre of the coil if that makes sense so they're not both on the bottom they're not both on the top they're kind of central on the coil there yeah let's just repeat it on the next coil so two legs slightly overlapping if you like one point in one way one point in slightly the other then we'll bend one that goes over the top up a bit we'll turn that over we'll do the same with the other bad boy yeah just like that give it a little tweak and now you should see that those coils got legs that come out the center of the coil so they're nice and central now I'm going to use a four post or a, a one with a, a double center it's not actually got four posts does it it's got four post holes so we're going to use a four post RDA so I know I can leave one of the legs exactly as it is that's absolutely spot on for it and what I'll do is I'll just take that and hold it tight in my pliers without crushing it and I'll get this leg and I'll bend it straight out yeah and then we we'll just hold it firm like that and we'll bend it straight up so we're making a bit of a staple jobs are good and same on this one hold him nice and firm bend him straight out Grip it again, bend it straight up, just like that. So now, we've got two staple looking coils, and we can bring this in. We can pop the screwdriver back in, and we can feed that through, just like that. How easy is that? I'll just trim those legs off. And then flush covers. Watch so they don't ping off and get you in the eye. Yeah? Boosh, done. Same again with this one. Pop him in there. Yeah? Push him right up. Hold him firm. Trim them legs off. No, I'm joking. Boosh. Now we can tighten the screws up. Now the screwdriver in. Tighten that up. Nice and tight. Same with this one. And all we need to do is just pull that away from the centre post a little bit. 
jiggle him up, level him up a bit. One coil in, done. Spin him round. Same again. Pop him back in. A bit fiddly actually. Bear with. Gosh. No oh, thumbs this morning. Oh. Pop him back in. Yeah. Now I don't have to come and pick it up, but this leg's poking out a little bit. There's a chance it might short out on the other one, so no big deal. Just trim him off. A little bit off like that. Fit him back in. Make sure that nothing's touching where it shouldn't be. Oh, not the camera. Do, 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 do. And that just needs a little tweak. Am I good? Yeah. See what the resistance comes out at. Zero point six. That's absolutely spot on for me. That's just where I like it. Now what we got to do? Give it a bit of a pinch and a pulse. Right, so we'll just go give it a pulse look. We'll get in there with the ceramics. And we'll just get it nice and warm and then give it a squeeze. Nice and warm. Give it a squeeze. And that it's pretty much that. I'm going to show you an interesting point. Look, good little device this is. What I'll do, I'll get those coils hot and then we'll check the resistance. See, it's 0 0.9. That's because it's hot. Because the, the wire's hot, it increases the resistance. As that cools, that figure will drop. It's already gone to 0 0.8, 0 0.7, and it'll continue to drop as they cool down. No, I'll show you that again. So look, we're on 0 0.7. Let me just blow on it. Bear with. There we go. Back to 0 0.6. Yeah? Now we'll get it up. Bear with. We'll get it up, look. Go on, glow, glow, glow. And then flick it straight on. 0 0.9. So you can see how yeah, the resistance increases um, as that wire gets hot. That's kind of how your temperature control works with your NI200. Um, little chip in your box reads the resistance and when it fluctuates to that sort of degree it cuts it off. So it's a nice little demonstration. Anyway, I digress. There you go. Flat wire coils. Wound, shaped, fitted, pinched, pulsed, ready to wick, ready to rock and roll. Now obviously wicking is down to you. I'm quite into my cotton baking at the minute. But whatever you like, you like. And all you need to do is wick that up, fit it up, and you can vape away. We'll go back up top and talk a little bit about how the vape is. See you in a minute. So there you go. It's, it's not anything more difficult than wrapping normal coils to me. And um, I've got it in this Royal Hunter. I've got six wraps of 21 gauge, six wraps of 22 gauge. Gives a lovely lovely vape the flavor and cloud production is bob on it really is bob on and it lasts for ages you know it's not particularly expensive but you don't get hundreds of uh, meters of the stuff for your money but you don't need to you know these, these last a long time these little little pouches of it good we've got a facebook group um, which i'll put a link in Further down in the uh, old description, and it hit one of the cap, uh, one of the chaps up, either Eric or Daniel or one of the others, and order some if you want some. Really nice. See, the clouds are plenty, and the flavour that you get from it is on point. It really, really is. It's it it brings out all the nuances of uh, of of the juice that you're vaping. You know. When I first started, we only used canthal, so we could get hold of. Um, then stainless, people use stainless welding wire and stuff. 
Uh, I'm never 100% sure about using certain alloys, certain certain things might give off certain nasties that we don't know about and because I've got the old lung disease I need to vape safe as you should all vape safe this stuff's bang on, it really is suck it and see suck it and see if you like it as much as I do then I'll like it as much as you and it's really good Yeah, give it a whirl so thanks for watching um, I'll do another little review or whatever next up I think which has got a new product in that I'm quite keen to show off um, so I'll see you soon yeah remember people vape safe vape happy smoking kills vaping saves lives which do you choose I'll see you all soon take care bye bye